Welcome to St. Bartholomew Catholic Church in Wyzetta, Minnesota, for this, the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for reserving this time to be in prayer and to worship Almighty God. So we sign ourselves as God's holy people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Now our first reading today, we hear about Solomon and how he asked for the gift of wisdom. The connection is that we need wisdom to understand the parables, and there are three parables in the Gospel. Now the third parable talks about a fiery furnace. It's the ultimate destination of the wicked. So let us do all we can to avoid going there by admitting our sins and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you teach with wisdom and authority. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your words keep us on right paths. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you cleanse us of all our faults. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless 
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast now to those things that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed 
to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. So the gospel we just heard has three mini parables. I mean, they are really, really short. So we have the parable of the buried treasure, the parable of the pearl of great uh, value, and then we have the dragnet that's thrown into the sea. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but one of these parables is actually at least partly on display up here in the front of the church. So if you go to the tabernacle, you go off to the left, we have a symbol of the Holy Family, and in it we have the pearl of great price. So today we're going to feature this Holy Family sculpture. Now traditionally when we think of the Holy Family, we think of three persons, and when you look at the left of the sculpture, you see Jesus on the left, Mary in the middle, and then St. Joseph. 
This sculpture has four. There's a young girl on the right standing right next to St. Joseph. Now that young girl, she represents you and me. She represents the body of Christ, the church. She represents all of us. Now if you look at Joseph, he's got a staff in his hand and he's pointing it toward Mary and Jesus. And as Joseph would direct that young girl to, her, to Mary and Jesus, Joseph would direct you and me to Jesus and Mary as well. Now one of the distinctive features of this sculpture is the girl's left hand. Maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't. It's small, but it is very important. In the girl's left hand, between her thumb and her forefinger, right in the center there, there is a pearl. It's white. It's shiny white. It's brilliant white. It sparkles. It gleams. If it was a real pearl, it would be worth thousands of dollars. And it represents the pearl of great price in today's gospel. Now, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on a search for fine pearls. And when a person finds a pearl of great price, you go sell everything that you have and you buy the one really valuable pearl. Sounds to me like the Shane Company, don't you think? Okay, Tom Shane goes to Tel Aviv, he goes to Amsterdam, wherever, searching for diamonds, searching for pearls. When he finds really good ones, he buys them, he brings them back to the USA, and you can buy these diamonds, these pearls of great price, out on Hopkins Crossroad. Now you have a friend in the jewelry business. Now in this parable, we are the merchant. It's not Tom Shane, but each of us that's going out on this search for the pearl, not just any pearl, but for the pearl of great price. Now Jesus, when he taught with the parables, he usually did not give explanations. So these are really wide open-ended. They're figures of speech, and you can interpret them in a variety of different ways. So there's three parts to this parable. So you have the merchant, you have the less valuable pearls, and then you have the one pearl of great price, the really valuable pearl. So let's look at a couple of different ways, a number of different ways to interpret this parable. The girl is holding this priceless pearl. What is the single most priceless pearl that that girl could possess? Jesus is referring to himself. Jesus is the pearl of great price. Now, this girl, if she's a young Jew, she had a lot of very valuable pearls previously. I mean, it could be Moses, it could be Elijah, it could be Isaiah. They all spoke the Word of God. They all had pearls of wisdom that they spoke. She's going to trade them off, sell them off, trade them in. And she's going to use her pearl, the money, to buy the one truly valuable pearl, the pearl that's worth more than any voice in the Old Testament, Jesus the Word, the pearl of great price. Now, Jesus would be very pleased if we examined this uh, parable from a number of different other uh, angles, okay? So it's summertime, and we are here in Minnesota, and we Minnesotans, we love the great outdoors. We love the lakes, all 10,000 of them. I suppose we could consider them 10,000 pearls. The pearls of Minnesota, we love the fish in the lakes. We love the wild animals, maybe the bird, like the state bird, the loon. We love the flowers, maybe like the state flower, the lady slipper. Minnesota is a treasure, one pearl after another. But what's the greatest pearl? It's not the lakes, not the loons, not the flowers, but the one who made them. Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. Almighty God is the pearl of great price. And when we find God, the lakes are no longer our greatest love, but rather the one who made the lakes. We can still enjoy the lakes, but we treasure God above all else, God, the pearl of great price. So let's try another angle. There are many different philosophers, and there's many different schools of philosophy. All these are ways to arrive at the truth. So you have Aristotle, Plato, Socrates. There's existentialism, rationalism, relativism. All are extremely valuable to thinkers, pearls for thinkers, pearls of wisdom, ways to understand reality, ways to understand the truth. Now, there is one pearl of great price when it comes to clear thinking and one pearl of great price when it comes to determining the truth. And that pearl is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who guides us to all truth. So a person could possess Plato, or a person could possess the pearl of rationalism. But when a person finds the Holy Spirit, 
You sell off the less valuable pearls, you cash them in, and you use the money to buy the pearl of great price, the Holy Spirit. Are you ready for another angle? We can try another one. Let's try it, okay? So the Jews thought that the way to please God and the way to earn your salvation was to obey the Mosaic Law. I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but there are 613 uh, precepts or rules or regulations in the Mosaic Law. So the Jews, they clung to the law. The good Jews were on a lifelong mission to keep all of these rules and regulations. Each law, each commandment was considered a pearl. These laws are extremely valuable. These laws keep you on the right path. These laws keep you in right relationship with God. If you observe these laws, you would enjoy God's favor. If you would observe these laws, it would ensure that a person would be saved. So the Mosaic Law is like this unbelievable necklace, a beautiful necklace with 613 pearls. But remember that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant's search, not for 613 pearls, but for one pearl of great price. The Jews were searching, actually everyone is searching. Is there one law, one pearl that can replace all of the other laws? The people came to Jesus searching, and Jesus gave them the pearl of great price, the law of love. When a person loves their neighbor, there is no need for any other laws. A person can trade in the Mosaic law or any other laws, any other set of laws, less valuable pearls, cash them out, use the money, and buy the pearl of great price, the law of love. Love is the pearl of great price. Let's do one final pearl of great price, an extremely important one, and one that might not pop into your mind right away. So here we are in the midst of COVID-19. So we're watching Mass. We don't have a fever. We don't have a cough. We're mostly healthy. Now, some individuals have medical conditions, but we're alive, breathing, taking nourishment. We're on the green side of the grass. Now, there's a saying that says, when you've got your health, you have everything. A beating heart is a pearl. Two lungs that got air going back and forth, that's a pearl. A stomach that's digesting food, that is a pearl. But please remember that the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant's search, not for the pearls of a good heart, not for two good lungs, not for a good stomach, but for the one pearl of great price that's more valuable than any of these. That pearl is not life on earth. That pearl is life in heaven. And when a person finds heaven, the person realizes that it's time to cash out your life on earth, to actually sell off your physical health, to cash in your physical life and buy something much more valuable, the, value, the pearl of great price, eternal life with God in heaven forever. Now, Jesus is right. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant's search for fine pearls. The girl in the Holy Family statue, or sculpture there, is holding a beautiful pearl. It's a precious pearl. The pearl could be Jesus, it could be God the Father, it could be the Holy Spirit, it could be truth, it could be love, or it could be heaven, or any other spiritual thing of great value. Our life is a constant search. We would be wise to trade off those pearls of lesser value and like the girl in the sculpture, to take hold of the pearl of great price. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I, I believe, believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten God, Son of God, God born, born of the Father, Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate <clears throat> and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God leads us to wisdom, and wisdom leads us to prayer. So let us now turn to Almighty God with our concerns. For the church, for those who lead the church throughout the world and in our local community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, for any parts of the world, our country and our cities where there is conflict, and for those who are committed to finding solutions to conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer, for those who are unemployed, for those struggling in their marriages, for children who are hurting, for those in need of physical or emotional healing, for those living with depression, anxiety, and all conditions that make day-to-day -day life difficult, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in prison, for mercy for those who are ready for another chance, for compassion for those who are tempted to despair, for those who want to live good lives but don't know how to begin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on summer travel, for those who are our guests for worship today, for the stranger in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all people who are dying, for those who will die today, for a peaceful death for those who are near death, for all those who have died due to COVID-19, for all who will die as a result of acts of violence, and for all our beloved dead that they may be led to the gates of paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of wisdom, our creator, the author of all goodness, your kingdom is like a pearl of great price. Please hear the prayers that we present to you now through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, these offerings, which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, and also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all of your creatures would serve you. All the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and martyrs, Saint Bartholomew, Saint Paul, 
and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop. Andrew, our auxiliary bishop, all the clergy and religious, and all your people. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you've gathered, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
We have uh, just one announcement this weekend. A couple of weeks ago, we spoke about uh, School is Cool and the backpack program that we do for the Banyan community. Now, we've done this for a number of years, and I tell you, the um, generosity of our parishioners has just been escalating year after year. It's gone from 60 to 80 to 100. Uh, last year, we had 150 backpacks. They used them all. So the hope was that we were going to be able to do 180 or 150 backpacks again this year, and we said that the deadline was going to be, uh, was going to be yesterday, the 24th. Well, we didn't achieve our goal, so we got 60-some done, and we've got about 80 to go. So um, we're going to extend the deadline one more week. I think that you maybe know that the beneficiaries of this are young children that are in the Phil Phillips neighborhood that participate in Banyan. It's only a short distance from Holy Rosary Parish, so we're benefiting the same people, the same people that have been affected by the COVID-19 economic downturn, the same people that have been affected by the riots and all of the looting and all of the trouble in their neighborhoods. These people are needy, and really, they, we could do a great help to them. Um, on the parish website, there's a place where it says School is Cool and the Backpacks, and you can uh, sign up to adopt one or more of them. And if you don't want to be bothered with going out and doing all of the shopping, you can actually donate what the value of a backpack would be. And there's another place on the website where you can click and do that. So we'd like to invite you and your generosity, as we've done so many times so well as a parish community before, to adopt these 50 or 150 backpacks and to provide for the young children in the Phillips neighborhood that participate in the Banyan program. And let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, 
the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son, grant we pray that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Cheers.